Good day everyone, in today's episode, we will be talking about glycolysis. Now, what is glycolysis? Glycolysis is part of the metabolic pathway. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. Glycolysis is the first stage of both aerobic and anaerobic cellular respiration. Now what happens during a glycolysis reaction? The molecule of a glucose that is having the 6 carbon sugar is broken down into two molecules of a 3 carbon compound that we call a pyruvate. And so a glycolysis reaction produces ATP or adenosine triphosphate and NADH or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. The oxidation of NADH leads into the production of ATP molecules. And we all know that ATP is a molecule that releases fuel to a cellular process. The glycolysis reaction steps are as follows. In the first step, a phosphate group from ATP gets transferred to the glucose molecule present in the cell cytoplasm. This produces glucose 6 phosphate. This step is catalyzed by the enzyme called the hexokinase enzyme. In step number 2, the glucose 6 phosphate gets converted into its isomer that is fructose 6-phosphate by the action of another enzyme called phosphoglucomutase. In step number 3, another phosphate group gets transferred from ATP to fructose 6-phosphate. This will produce fructose 1,6-biphosphate under the influence of another enzyme called phosphofructokinase. In step number 4, the enzyme aldolase acts on the fructose 1,6-biphosphate and splits this into a dehydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP or DAP and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. These two 3 carbon molecules are isomers of each other. Out of them, only the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate can directly continue through the next step of glycolysis. In step number 5, as the DAP cannot directly take part in the consecutive steps of the process of glycolysis, it gets converted into its isomer called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme called triose phosphate isomerase. The enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase or GAPDH adds a phosphate from the cytosol to the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to form the molecule 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. The same enzyme also dehydrogenates the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by transferring one of its hydrogen or H plus molecules to the oxidizing agent called NAD plus to form the molecule NADH and H ions. The two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate both undergo the process of phosphorylation and dehydrogenation. 
After this, in step number 7, the 1 3 by phosphoglycerate donates one of its phosphate groups to ADP, making a molecule from ADP into an ATP and turning into 3 phosphoglycerate called 3 PGA in this process. And so, therefore, there are two molecules of 1 and 3 by phosphoglycerate, and the reaction will now yield in 2 3 PGA and 2 ATPs. In step number 8, this 3 phosphoglycerate gets converted into its isomer, which is the 2 phosphoglycerate by the action of the enzyme called phosphoglyceromutase. And in step number 9, the enzyme enolase acts on 2 phosphoglycerate and removes a molecule of water from it, thus producing what we call a molecule called phosphoenol pyruvate or PEP. In step number 10, the PEP is an unstable molecule so it loses one of its phosphate group in this step and so the lost phosphate group gets to the ADP under the influence of the enzyme called pyruvate kinase. In this step, this will yield into a two molecules of pyruvate and two molecules of ATPs in the end. As this pyruvate enters into the next phase of cellular respiration, it is considered as the end product already of glycolysis. In summary, the glucose molecules or glucose molecule through the process of glycolysis will yield two molecules of ATP, two molecules of NADH, and two molecules of pyruvate. Now, this pyruvate or pyruvate molecules later on can enter into the various metabolic pathways depending on the cell's needs and the availability of oxygen. For example, in an aerobic conditions, that is, requirement of oxygen is necessary, pyruvate therefore is further metabolized in the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, which will be discussed in another video presentation. And oxidative phosphorylation to produce more ATPs. In the case of the absence of oxygen called anaerobic conditions, this pyruvate can be converted into lactate or can either also undergo into alcoholic fermentation depending on the organism. And so this concept is called the fate of pyruvate which will be discussed in another separate video. This fate of pyruvate will be processed depending on the availability of oxygen. For example, again, if oxygen is available, the pyruvate is transported to the mitochondria, which will undergo an oxidative decarboxylation, which produces an acetyl-CoA.